So, good morning, buongiorno. I'm the CEO of FIMI, the Italian Federation of the Music Industry, uh, FIMI, la Federazione Industria Musicale Italiana. Uh, thank you for being here. The panel will be in English, and I introduce uh, uh, David uh, Price from uh, IFPI, Director of Insight from IFPI. IFPI is the International Federation of the Music in the Recording Industry. And uh, recently, it's, I think it's the first time we, we present this uh, uh, research here in, uh, in Italy. Uh, IFPI has carried out a research uh, in, uh, the field was about uh, July, August this year, and include, uh, uh, I think, uh, at the end, 22 countries in the world with uh, 44,000 people in the, uh, monitored by, by the research. And uh, we are going to present some insights regarding the Italian market. And uh, at this stage, I ask uh, David to start his uh, presentation. Presentation will be then uh, available, or it's already part, part, partially available on the website of FIMI. Uh, the international uh, presentation is downloaded from, uh, downloading from the uh, IFPI site. So David, it's up to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining the Milan Music Week. Grazie. Grazie, Enzo. Uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me, uh, Rosella, wherever she is, for organizing this panel. I know how much work she puts into this. Uh, I'd like to thank you as well for allowing me to do this panel in English. Uh, if I did it in Italian, it would be very, very short. Um, as Enzo said, I'd like to present to you some of the results from uh, our music consumer study for 2022. Uh, this is one of IFPI's largest pieces of work, one of our major projects. Um, as Enzo said, um, IFPI, sorry, my clicker should be working and isn't working. Yeah. There we go. Obviously pressing the wrong button. IFPI is the voice of the recorded music industry worldwide. We have over 8,000 record company members. That includes the three big majors, Universal, Warner, and Sony, but also thousands of smaller independent record labels worldwide. We work on behalf of them to try and make their business as easy and simple as possible. We are an international organization. We're headquartered in London. We have regional offices in places like Brussels to handle the European Commission, uh, in Singapore, in Abu Dhabi, in Nairobi, in Miami. But a lot of our work takes place through national groups. And in Italy, of course, that's FEMI, which Enzo heads up. So much of what we do as IFPI is work closely with our national groups to help them promote the value of recorded music. If you have heard of IFPI, sorry, I should be going on to another slide, there we go. It's probably through publications like the Global Music Report. Uh, this we publish every year. This has the revenues for the recorded music industry globally and for each country. So we push this out as widely as possible and this is the authoritative data on how much money is coming into the recorded music industry. My focus is more on people listening to music and engaging with music. It's about what the average person does when they're interacting with music. What are they listening to? How are they listening to it? What trends are we seeing over time? So we also publish a report called Engaging with Music. We actually published this last Thursday. Um, this is available to download from the IFPI website. And this is the headlines, the real highlights of our music consumer study. As Enzo mentioned, there is a full Italian version that you can download from the FEMI website. Both of those are for free. And those are, as I said, the highlights of what we get from the music consumer study. What I'm gonna give you today is some of that material, but really more of a deep dive into lots of uh, data about Italy and me people's music habits in Italy that aren't in those reports. So our music consumer study, sorry, my slides are not coming as I was expected. There we go. Our music consumer study is uh, an annual project. As far as we know, it is the largest music-focused consumer study globally. 
We are in 22 different countries worldwide. That covers about 87% of the revenues uh, that are earned in the recorded music industry. Uh, and 44,000 people complete an online, online survey. In Italy, we speak to 2,000 people. We tend to focus on people aged between 16 and 64. We take a nationally representative sample. So the data we get should be representative of what is taking place in the country as a whole. There we go. I obviously need to point it that way. So one of the first things we look at is the share of music listening. We try to break down um, how people are listening to music and how much music they are listening to each week. So in Italy, we had 20.5 hours of music a week uh, on average across each of our people aged 16 to 64. On average, they told us they were listening to just under 21 hours of music a week. That's three hours of music a day. And remember, these aren't necessarily committed music fans. This is just the average person in Italy listening to about three hours of music a week. And that's an increase of 7% on 2021, which is pretty positive on its own. When you think pe music is competing with streaming video, with social media, uh, with uh, all the other areas that are competing for people's leisure time, music is still a major part of people's lives. Where it gets really interesting is when we start breaking this down by how people are listening to music. Up here in the corner, you can see this is subscription audio streaming. So this is like the premium tier of Spotify. This is people paying for a streaming service. So that's about 14% of people's listening time. It's about one in six hours is spent on a subscription streaming service. We then have free streaming, so the ad-supported tier of Spotify, for instance, where people are listening to music, but it's interrupted by adverts. And again, put those two together, you can't quite see that figure because it's a bit pale, but it's about one quarter of all listening time in Italy is coming through those music streaming services. Then we have YouTube, uh, main, or video streaming as a whole, most of which in Italy comes through YouTube. There are some other services which are unlicensed, Vimeo for instance, um, which has a bit of video streaming consumption as well, but primarily video streaming in the music industry still means YouTube. Uh, we also have short-form video. So TikTok, when it comes to Italy, is the dominant short-form video platform. And about uh, 1.4 hours a week, on average, is being cons music is being consumed through short-form video platforms. That doesn't mean 1.4 hours looking at TikTok. That means 1.4 hours where people are on TikTok and music is the focus of what they're doing. It could be a lip sync, it could be a dance challenge, but music is driving that engagement. Uh, we also have uh, social media, so perhaps watching videos on Facebook or an Instagram reel where music again is the focus. And then we have, if this comes up, sorry, radio. Radio is still a really big part of music consumption in Italy, and it's not going to go away. You know, radio is a big issue when it comes to people listening to music here in Italy, as we find across many European countries. Purchase music, so CDs, vinyl, digital downloads that people have bought. Again, it's about 11.5%. So taking up a lot of time, those older legacy methods of music listening are still a big part of people's music lives in Italy. And then we have a few other methods of engaging with music. Live performances, both in clubs like this and also live streams online. There's people listening to music that they've pirated and downloaded, and I'm going to come back to that, and also various other methods. But what you can see in Italy is really a healthy mix of music engagement methods. You know, these newer methods like streaming, video streaming, short form video, are interacting with these older legacy methods that are still important, radio, purchase music and others. And it's interesting as well to compare this to the rest of Europe. We see some similarities, but a lot of differences. Radio is strong in a lot of European countries. 
Although if you look at, for instance, at the Netherlands, 29% of music listening, Germany, 27% of music listening. Those are countries where radio plays a much bigger part. Uh, in Poland, you know, YouTube is, is very dominant, a quarter of all music listening. And then it's really interesting to look at Sweden. Over here, 42% of all music listening in Sweden is through subscription streaming, and that means Spotify Premium in Sweden. Obviously, Sweden is where Spotify first launched in 2008, and it has come to absolutely dominate the market. It has helped bring the Swedish market back, uh, it has helped revenues drive up, and it is, has been widely adopted in Sweden in a way that it hasn't been any, in a, in a, uh, to the extent that it hasn't been anywhere else in the world. More lit music is listened to through Spotify Premium in Sweden than anywhere else. One of the really interesting things to ask, and maybe this can come up in questions at the end, is whether Sweden is leading the way. Are we all in Europe headed towards a Swedish future where streaming and Spotify Premium and uh, Apple Music dominates our listening habits? Or is Sweden distinct? Is it unique in some way? That means this is a Swedish phenomena, and Italy, up here, is going to stay pretty much how it is, with radio important, people still buying CDs and vinyl, and a lot of other styles of music listening. I'd be interested to get your feedback at the end on that. We can also break this down by age. So again, this is just Italy. These are the same figures I showed you earlier in that big pie, but we're going to look at it this by age. And as we break down music listening by age, we see a number of different things happen. The first and most obvious is that younger people listen to the most music. Now, we, we see that in every single country we look at. And if I asked you who listens to the most music, you'd probably tell me it's younger people who do it. So this is no surprise that those, you know, you've got 16 to 19 year olds in Italy listening to almost 24 hours of music a week. And as people get older, music becomes slightly less important to them. The second thing we see is that for younger users, those newer methods of listening, subscription streaming, video streaming, short form video, those are most important. 84%, I'm standing on the wrong side, 84% of 16 to 19 year olds music engagement is coming through some kind of streaming. Whether that's audio streaming, video streaming, short form video, social media, most of their engagement with music is live, it's streamed, it's coming through a newer sort of uh, delivery service. Whereas 55 to 64 year olds, they're still very much dependent on the radio. A third of all music listening for older users comes through the radio. It's just 4% for 16 to 19 year olds. Which raises another question about where this is going in the future. So, I wanted to look at the trends as well. Um, so this is uh, our chart for music listening trends over time. I've just taken the main methods by which people look at music. Um, this is radio in Italy. Um, we have this big gap in the middle, unfortunately, which hasn't quite come out on the chart. We didn't do a music consumer study in 2020. It was the height of the pandemic. People were locked down. We were in two minds about whether we should field the survey or not. We decided not to. I wish we had, because I think we'd get great data from it about how music maintained itself as an important part of people's lives. So we're guessing a bit as to what happened here. We're connecting up 2019 to 2021. But this is radio listening in Italy over that period. It's hovering around four hours for each person listening to music. Um, this is video streaming, again, sort of four to five hours a week for most people listening over that period. But now we start to see changes. This is subscription streaming, so again, Apple Music, Spotify Premium, and you can see growing an hour a week on average in 2018, up to more than three hours a week on average uh, in 2022. If we look at ad-supported streaming, you can see a similar sort of growth. And then we see an even bigger growth for short-form video and social media, up from less than an hour a week in 2018 to about two and a half hours a week 
in 2022. So that's overall. Where we see the biggest changes is in our youngest users. So this is, again, is 16 to 19 year olds. So we're really focusing on those people who are most engaged with music. So first of all, this is the jump in listening to subscription streaming. So again, Spotify Premium, um, up from less than three hours a week in 2018 to nearly seven hours a week. So more than doubled over that period, more people streaming, more people paying for streaming, more people realizing the, the convenience and the advantages of having all of that music on your phone or on your computer. Um, this is free streaming again, which adds supported streaming, which is relatively level. Um, video streaming, again, YouTube uh, primarily, you know, relatively same uh, uh, year on year. And then we see this massive jump in short form video and social media interaction. Going from about an hour a week in 2018, huge rise from the pandemic onwards. It's when everybody downloaded TikTok, everybody started to use it. A jump up to what? Nearly five and a half hours a week of short form video and social media interaction with music amongst this youngest age group. I see it with my daughter, she's 16. She spends God knows how many hours on TikTok. Um, this is radio, um, and radio, you can see, has started to drop for the, this younger age group, um, and then purchased music as well, also starting to drop, but gradually. They're not dropping with the same speed that subscription streaming and that social media and short-form video are growing, but they are starting to decline. So again, here's this second question for you. Is this the future? Um, are we going to see a gradual decline in radio listening, in people listening to CDs and vinyl? Or as this group gets older, do they start to again realize the convenience of radio? Do they start to value vinyl? Do they start to interact with CDs again? So what's the future here? And I, I'd love to get your feedback on that later in the presentation. So. Let's focus on audio streaming. This is what's driving revenues in the market. This is what's driving uh, the rise in revenues in Italy, as, as it is in, in many European countries. We see 70% of people in, in, in Italy engaging with some kind of audio streaming service. So uh, by this I mean Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Amazon Music. 70% um, of people are using one of those services for music at least once a month. 38%, so just under, just under 4 in 10, are using a premium service, a paid service like Spotify Premium or Apple Music. And again, if we look at that by age, you can see that it does drop off as people get older, both the number of people who are streaming, you're using streaming full stop, and the number of people paying for the streaming service. And again, we see this in every country. The, the precise figures might vary, but it's the same kind of drop-off over time from younger users most engaged to the older users who are least likely to use streaming. Spotify was the most used service here. 46% of people said they use Spotify for some kind of music streaming at least once a month. And we ask why. What, what do you do this for? What are you getting when you're paying for streaming? And for most people, it's about on-demand access to uninterrupted music listening. So listening to music without adverts, um, listening to what I want, when I want, being able to queue up any piece of music at any time. Unlimited streams, being able to skip from, street, from song to song as much as you like. Much higher in younger users than in older users. Um, Convenience and ease of use. I mean, certainly that would be one of my key reasons for subscribing. I remember days of having CDs and vinyl, being only able to listen to one track at a time, having to change things around. But the ability to have all of that music in my pocket, on my phone, hugely convenient. Um, saving music to listen offline. Again, this is higher for younger users than for older users. Perhaps they have to pay for their own data plan on their phone. They want to be able to just download it onto their phone and have their music to listen to when they want. Um, and then access to millions of songs. Again, it's that rich music library 
that is available on any streaming service. So we find younger listeners more likely to enjoy skipping through songs. Maybe that's that TikTok influence. They're used to just swiping whenever they want something new. Older listeners are slightly more, slightly more attracted by the convenience uh, and the ability to have that rich music library in front of them. We ask people as well, what's your preference? Um, wh which is your streaming service that you most enjoy using? For most people in Italy, it's YouTube, and that, that's YouTube, the video streaming service, uh, followed by Spotify. Amazon is very popular as well, uh, and also YouTube Music, the paid version of YouTube, which is like Spotify Premium once you pay for it. And we do see, again, an age difference here. For younger users, they're very much focused on Spotify. The people who are most engaged with music are plugging into the, to the music streaming service rather than the video streaming service that also has music that's YouTube. Amazon tends to appeal to slightly older listeners, probably people who pay for Prime and have Amazon Music as an added benefit. And then we also see a few people who say TikTok is their favorite way of engaging with music overall, but not many. You know, TikTok is primarily, it's, it's an entertainment medium with music as an added benefit. So one of the other things we ask is how people choose music on their streaming service. When you've got the 100 million tracks at your disposal, how are you locating content? So our top four answers in Italy are people actually searching for things themselves. Specific songs, artists, playlists, or albums. And this is really interesting because it means that the key here is not Discover Weekly. It's not uh, the playlists that the platforms offer. It's the ability of people to access all of that recorded music on those services and platforms. So it's less about the curation that the platform offers, you know, Discover Weekly, Rap Caviar, the charts, other people's playlists. It's about people being able to access all of that music that has been licensed and uploaded to the streaming services. And we see this everywhere. This isn't an Italian thing. This is what we see in every country we ask. I, I spoke about Sweden earlier, the most advanced streaming market, if you like, and it's the same thing there. The real advantage of streaming is having all of that music at your fingertips and being able to search for and find anything you want. So, talked about streaming, let's go back to one of those legacy formats, which is radio. Still really important in Italy. One fifth of all music listening takes place through the radio. And we see very high levels of interaction with the radio across all age groups. 60% of 16 to 24s still listen to music on the radio. This is live radio, so broadcast radio. 80% of uh, our older age groups. We also have things like catch-up radio, listening to programs that have already aired, and also internet-only radio stations that aren't broadcast terrestrially. So overall, if you add all those up, we have over 80% of people in Italy who are engaging with music on the radio at least once a month. It's still a really important part of people's music lives here. Why? <coughs> Why are they tuning into the radio? They're tuning in mainly for the music. 77% uh, of people, why do you listen to the radio? It's for the music. It's not for the presenter or the news or the traffic reports or the weather. They're listening for the music. That's what's driving their engagement with the radio. It's what's making them choose a particular radio station. And we also ask people, would you listen if there wasn't any music? And 69% in Italy uh, said no. I, if there was no music on the radio, what's the point? And those figures are very consistent, particularly in Europe, but in almost any country where people listen to music on the radio, it is music that's driving that engagement. And when we ask people, what would you do instead? If you couldn't listen to music on the radio, they'd go find it somewhere else. They'd go to a streaming service, they'd go to YouTube, they'd start buying CDs and vinyl again. 87% um, in Italy, if I couldn't listen to music on the radio, I'd buy it or stream it or listen to it somewhere else. 
A few people would go to podcasts or audiobooks, but most people, radio is substitutional for music being listened to elsewhere. All right, so that's the oldest way of engaging with music. Um, let's talk about one of the newest ways. So short form video, and in Italy, the real focus is on TikTok. So here we have use of TikTok by age. Um, you can see almost 75% of the youngest age group, 16 to 19 year olds, are using TikTok at least once a month. And most of them are using TikTok every single day. About 55% of 16 to 19 year olds are on TikTok every day. I'm surprised it's that low. Uh, we ask people how many hours a week they're spending on TikTok. Almost 10 hours a week for 16 to 19 year olds. If it was my daughter, that would probably be 100 hours a week. Um, it's just, it's just constant TikTok access. Um, that's how much time they spend on it. And then we ask, how much of that time is spent where music is really driving your, video, driving your engagement? So again, it's a lip sync video, it's a dance challenge, it's a, it's a makeup video where the music is sort of, where the video is in time with the music. How much is that recorded music driving that engagement? And you can see you know, most of it. It's, it's about 60% in Italy of TikTok engagement has music driving the video consumption. And TikTok is really key for music discovery. As we know, it has really changed the music industry in many ways. And for most people, I discover lots of new music on TikTok. I discover more because I'm active on TikTok. I'm learning about new releases more easily. And I'm finding out about new music from my favorite accounts. It's really key to discovery uh, for many people who are using it. And that takes us on to this slide, and I find this slide really fascinating. This is one of my favorite ways of demonstrating how the changes in music consumption are impacting day-to-day -day habits. So what we've got is our age groups down the side, and the percent of people who say, this is how I find new music. This is how I'm discovering new tracks. So this is short form video, and this is a massive impact and a massive difference between what our youngest age groups are doing and what our oldest age groups are doing. 38% of 16 to 19s are discovering new music on TikTok. It's the most popular way in which they access music and discover new tracks. This is video streaming, so YouTube, which is popular uh, throughout all age groups. Um, streaming services, if you use a streaming service like Spotify Premium, you are most likely to discover new music on that service, as you might expect. Probably coming over the wrong side again. TV or film is really important in Italy. Um, sorry, I don't know where to stand here. 29% uh, of people in Italy discovered new music through TV programs or through films, and that's the highest figure we see in Europe or North America or Latin America. We only see higher figures in a few Asian countries, and in a couple of African countries. So the, the influence of television, uh, television programs, music programs, and film in Italy is higher than we see in most other countries. Uh, we also have word of mouth. Obviously, that's very important. You, you learn by talking to your friends and talking to your families or discussing online about new music. Um, social media is also important. And then we have radio, again. Still important. Look at that. It's almost the exact opposite of what we see for short form video. Radio is the most important source for anyone 45 or over in Italy for finding out about new music. And it is the most popular single discovery source in Italy. That doesn't mean that it's the most music being discovered because these younger people, um, 16 to 19, 16 to 24, they're the people who are most active discovering new music. Um, they discover new music, what we've got, uh, one in two, 50% of that youngest age group are discovering new music once a week, and that's twice as often as the oldest age groups. So radio's there, radio's important, but it's appealing to the people who are least engaged with music. And I want to show you a few slides as well about the importance of Italian music here in Italy. 
that the domestic industry, domestic artists, the people who sing in Italian, who write Italian songs, are absolutely <laughs> vital to this music industry in this country. Overall, we have uh, people in Italy listening to about eight genres on average. And if we look at the most popular genres, right at the top is Italian pop. You know, pop in the Italian language from Italian artists. We have singer-songwriters, a uh, particular Italian genre, you know, twice as popular here as in any other country. Um, Italian hip-hop, you know, not just hip-hop in general, but in the Italian language by Italian artists, one in four people are typically listening to Italian hip-hop. If we look at the top songs from last year and the top albums from last year, they're all Italian. Italian artists, Italian language. We don't see that in any other country. You know, in France, yes, there's a lot of French artists. In Mexico, in Brazil, there's a lot of domestic artists. But it's very rare to have this kind of dominance of native language music in a country. And we see it throughout age groups. 16 to 19 year olds aren't listening to as much Italian pop, but they are listening to Italian hip hop. Again, it's that native language appeal here in this country. Older, older listeners um, tend to be listening to Italian pop rather than hip hop. And if we look at hip hop listeners themselves, uh, you know, again, it's Italian hip hop that is really driving that. So I want to just compare that to a few other countries because I think there's something really in this. Half of people, half of Italians that we talked to said they listen to Italian pop. How do we compare that to some other countries? Let's think about K-pop. K-pop has been a worldwide phenomenon over the last few years. BTS, Blackpink, so many different groups are now globally famous, built on the strength of their popularity and fame in their domestic market. But only 52% of people in Korea listen to K-pop. It's not dominant in that country. What's happened is that the Korean government has made a lot of investments in helping promote K-pop, and there's been a lot of interest in promoting and developing K-pop acts outside of Korea. So we think of K-pop as this dominant, uh, dominant art form in Korea, but only 52% of people are listening to it. And we've got 50% of people in Italy listening to Italian pop, so why can't we see the same? You know, it would be wonderful to get that promotion of Italian pop artists out in the same way that we've seen K-pop artists. And in fact, we find that more people in Italy listen to Italian pop than listen to you know, French pop, German pop in, in any other country apart from Korea and Japan. Those figures are higher in Korea and Japan only, but for listening to domestic pop, it's higher in Italy than any other country. So it would be great to see some of those Italian pop artists start to become globally famous in a way that we haven't seen. Singing in Italian, perhaps. Same way that BTS became famous, still singing in Korea. So talking a bit now about diversity and about um, the diversity of methods through which people engage with music. One of the great advantages uh, of the music industry over the last few years, the last 10 years or so, has been the wealth of methods by which people can now engage with music. When I was a kid, there were CDs, there was vinyl, um, oops, sorry, pressed the wrong button again, and there was radio, uh, and there was live music, I guess I could go to gigs, but that was it. You know, th there's not much there in terms of ways that I could interact with music. Now we've got video streaming, audio streaming, um, short form video, live streaming on the radio, social media, gaming platforms, CD and vinyl is still there, television and film, exercise platforms, so many different ways in which recorded music is available to people to engage with. So on average, we find six and a half different methods by which people in Italy are engaging with recorded music. When I was a kid, it was maybe two or three. So a huge ways, a huge number of ways, and a huge number of convenient ways in which recorded music has been licensed to different methods for anyone to engage with. 
a few other stats that might stand out in this. Now, 72% say there are more mu ways of listening to music than ever before. And that figure's higher as people get older because they're people like me who remember the days of CDs and vinyl and radio. Whereas my daughter, she's grown up in a world where there's Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube and short form video and all of these different methods. To her, this is normality. And that's a wonderful thing. Her music education and her music tastes are far, far wider at 16 than mine certainly were. She listens to music that I have never heard before. She's introduced me to some good stuff. She introduces me to mostly to awful stuff, but some of it is actually really good. Um, some other ways of interacting with music. 60% in Italy have watched a music TV show or a mu music-focused film in the last month. We spoke about the importance of TV uh, to the Italian music market, and that's another indicator. Podcast listeners. For half of all podcast listeners in Italy enjoy music-focused podcasts. That's about twice as many as the global average. So again, an indication of how important music is to the Italian listener. 28% have watched a live stream of music on YouTube or Twitch or Instagram, some kind of live performance being broadcast uh, over, over some kind of streaming service. And this one, I think, is really fascinating. 44% of gamers, people who play Fortnite, Roblox, uh, GTA, Minecraft, whatever, if you're a gamer, 44% of them have experienced a live virtual concert uh, in the last month or so. So Ariana Grande, um, Travis Scott, Little Nas X, so many performances now taking place on Fortnite and Roblox and other virtual platforms. And that's astonishing when you think of what they're experiencing. With the Ariana Grande concert, she was a 100 meter tall avatar performing in ways that could not have been imagined a few years ago, letting people interact with her performance, letting her express herself and her performance and her music in ways that are completely new. So 44%, if you're a regular gamer, you are experiencing music in completely new ways. And one in five of 16 to 24s, so one in five of our youngest age group are experiencing those virtual concerts. We also have the importance of music in other ways. So for instance, to mental health. 61% of people said that music is important to their mental health in Italy, something that helps them relax, it gives them a sense of positivity, helps them, it picks them up when they're down, lets them wallow in their sorrow. You know, it's, music is one of those wonderful universal things that affects us in very positive ways. All right, um, let's talk a bit about the negatives. Uh, I spoke a bit about piracy. Unfortunately, piracy is something that still affects the music industry quite strongly. And it does that in Italy, just as the same way it does in many other countries. People don't talk much about music piracy anymore, but it is still out there, and it is still affecting the licensed market. 28% of people in Italy are pirating music. That's slightly lower than the global average. Most of them are doing it through stream ripping, and that's downloading from YouTube. Um, there are so many sites out there, Y2Mate, SS YouTube, YTMP3. They're unfortunately really easy to find with a Google search. And obviously, Google owns YouTube, and there's a lot of questions about what Google and YouTube could be doing to make this a lot harder, but I won't go into that. We do see a drop in stream ripping compared to last year here in Italy. And FEMI and the anti-piracy team uh, at FPM have done a lot of hugely important work blocking sites from people's ability to access them. If you queue up one of the most popular stream ripping sites on your phone or your laptop in Italy, hopefully you can no longer access it. The problem is that it's really easy to set these sites up and Google is really easy at telling you where they are. So people keep doing it and keep downloading this content uh, when they shouldn't be. We also see older legacy methods, again, of, of piracy, peer-to-peer -peer methods like BitTorrent. Uh, we see cyber lockers like Mega uh, and others where people are still downloading music as well.
And we ask people, why? Why are you doing this? You've got all of this music at your disposal through streaming services, video streaming, short form video. What are you up to? And what they tell us is that they're pirating, they're stream ripping because they don't want to pay for a Spotify subscription or an Apple Music subscription or YouTube Music. They want the advantages and the benefits. They want to be able to listen or offline on their phone. They want to listen to music without adverts. They want a permanent copy. They just don't want to pay for it. So it's, it's a natural human instinct. Can I get something for free? Yes, fine. So there's a lot, still a lot of work to do here in clamping down on this. Um, Enzo's team, FPM as well, do a huge amount of work here in Italy. And it's one of IFPI's key goals uh, and our targets is to get this piracy figure down as low as possible. Because as you can see, it is definitely affecting the licensed market. It is stopping people taking out subscriptions or buying music through some other means. Okay, last two slides, you'll be pleased to hear. Um, our last two questions in the study are trying to focus people's minds on what's most important to them. We've seen a huge amount of change in the recorded music market in the last five years or so. So what we want to know from people is what's most important to you if you had to pick. So the first question we ask is what device would you choose if you had to pick one to listen to music? And for most people, it's the smartphone, 40% in Italy. Um, we also know that in Italy, the hi-fis and turntables are still very important. That's one of the highest figures we see in the world. Almost one quarter of people saying, if you made me pick one method of listening to music, it would be on one of these older legacy devices. And you can see the age difference. For 70% of, of younger users, the smartphone is absolutely key. And that use of the hi-fi and the turntable rises significantly to one-third of, of the oldest users in the study um, for wanting to pick that. We know computers are important still for listening to music. The radio itself as a standalone uh, device picked by 10%. Things like smart speakers. Um, we were talk at the previous panel was talking about connected TVs. And this, there's something to that in terms of voice activation and voice operation. We also see other mobile devices, tablets, standard mobile phones, and then a variety of other methods. iPods are still popular among some people. Other portable devices. Um, music through your TV, um, through your gaming console. So again, a huge diversity but really pushing towards those newer methods, those newer types of technology for people's listening. And then our final question is choose your single method. You have to pick one way in which you will access music, one platform, what do you pick? For most people in Italy, it's video streaming, which tends to mean YouTube, 28% of there. But then another 22% would pick that free tier, the ad-supported tier, of a streaming service like Spotify or Deezer. So we've got 60% there who are choosing ad-supported uh, ways of engaging with music, which is great. You know, that's bringing revenue into the industry. It's rewarding artists. It's making sure that those people aren't, for instance, using a pirate piracy service to do that. They're using licensed methods to engage with music. That's the second highest in Europe uh, after, I think, Spain for ad-supported audio streaming. We also see the radio very important. Another 22% of people said, you know, if I had to list, choose something, it would be the radio. Uh, and then we have subscription streaming. Well, hopefully we do. There we go. So this is the paid tier again, Spotify, Premium, Apple Music. And if we look at the age groups, hopefully we can look at the age groups. There we go. Um, you can see, again, some big age differences, particularly here on the radio, just 4% for 16 to 24s, but 38% of our oldest listeners, 55 to 64, would pick the radio as their single listening method. Whereas for subscription, subscription streaming, Spotify paid, for instance, it's about 4 in 10 of our youngest users who would pick that if they had to choose anything. CDs or vinyl are still important to people. 
Um, piracy, we've got 4% of people who are those hardcore pirates that we're never going to persuade to use licensed methods. And then a variety of others, things like TikTok, for instance, still there as uh, you're becoming a more important part of, of music listening for many people. That's me done. Grazie, thank you for listening. Thank you, David. It was, was a really great presentation. I think everybody here was impressed about how detailed was the the research on the, on the Italian market. So I, th I think the um, presentation will be available in, in the near future. In any case, uh, FEMI uh, can be uh, addressed with the request and uh, we will share some of the information on request, in particular for academic study and mm -hmm. any further uh, needs. So thank you for being here. Grazie a tutti per essere stati qua con noi. And uh, see you soon, I hope next year, with uh, an update of a presentation. Il prossimo anno, forse con un altro aggiornamento di questa interessante ricerca. Grazie a tutti. <clears throat>